The desire to adapt Super Sentai for a U.S. audience goes as far back as 1982, when Stan Lee and Marvel Comics actually got into negotiations with Toei. In the end, they really didn't do anything with it. However, some years later, another man would develop the same interest and develop the same passion to bring Sentai over here to the U.S. And his name is Haim Saban. Born to Jewish parents in Alexandria, Egypt, Haim Saban resided there until the age of 12. Then his family migrated to Tel Aviv, Israel. Haim was known to be a bit of a troublemaker and was expelled from boarding school. Although he later enrolled in night school, his principal would go on to tell him, you're not cut out for academic studies. You're cut out for making money. Haim Saban always had a very strong work ethic. He had this even when he was younger. And this is evidenced by the fact that he would do all sorts of odd jobs. He would sell cactus fruit out on the street. He would even shovel manure. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, one of his first business ventures was as a contractor shoveling manure in the stables. It really doesn't get more humble than that, okay? He shoveled barnyard poop, people. Power Rangers, poop. From the bottom to the top, okay? While serving in the Israeli Defense Force at the age of 20, Haim would make his first entry into show business. He would become the manager and a member of a band called the Lions of Judah. After his stint with the group, he would focus on being an entertainment manager and record producer. Haim set up shop in Paris and began to travel between Israel and France often. While in Israel, he heard a nine-year-old boy named Noam Kaniel he heard him sing and was very impressed with the boy's voice and decided to teach him French to get him recording contracts in France. The biggest break would come in the form of a theme song for the French adaptation of the Japanese anime series UFO Robot Grandizer, known in France as Goldorak. So the light went off in Saban's head. These TV stations that had these cartoons that they aired, they had to get the music licenses for them. So that was just another way for him to make royalties off of the music that he produced. Armed with this knowledge, Haim would meet in Paris with the founder of Deke Audiovisual, Jean Chalopin, in 1980. Saban offered to make free music in exchange for keeping the publishing rights. Along with his friend Shuki Levy, they started composing music for various shows. In 1983, Saban made the move to Los Angeles, California, and continued to make the same music publishing offer to various production companies. With the help of Shuki Levy and Noam Kaniel, he produced music for several well-known cartoons throughout the 80s, such as Kid Video, Ulysses 31, Jace and the Wheeled Warriors, Maple Town, Inspector Gadget, The Mysterious Cities of Gold, Mask, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, She-Ra, Princess of Power, and Dino Saucers. A lot of the shows that Haim and his group produced music for became very, very popular and these hits only added to their success and granted them even greater exposure. I mean, come on, if you were growing up back in the day, you didn't hear Dino Saucers? Dino Saucers! One year later, while on a business trip in Japan, Haim would make, arguably, his most important discovery. In 1984, uh, I was uh, laying on my bed in a hotel in Tokyo, flipping through the three channels, and all of a sudden, these five kids in spandex appeared and kicking monsters that came to Earth to eat all the food on Earth. And I thought, that sounds like an intelligent show, and I'd like to... <laughs> I just, uh, I can't explain why, but I fell in love with it. Chodenshi Bioman. The series was about five young men and women who each have different ancestors that were showered with bioparticles when Bio-Robo and his companion Peebo came to Earth many years ago. These bioparticles would originate from Bio-Robo and Peebo's homeworld, Biostar, which had already met its apocalyptic end. Dr. Man and his new Empire Gear feel they are superior to humanity and want to take over the world. To stop Dr. Man, Bio-Robo and Peebo set out to find the descendants of the humans they originally doused with the bioparticles. Once found and assembled, they each receive a techno brace that gives them the ability to harness the bioparticles within and become Super Electron 
Bioman. In Bioman, we see some more Super Sentai history first. We see two female rangers on the team. We also see the first female second in command, who is also the first female to wear yellow. This ends up being very pivotal for the series because it becomes a gender interchangeable color from that point on. She is also the first female team member to die. And we also get the first numerical designation for the team members. This was to be the singing debut of Takayuki Mayuchi's first of many tokusatsu related themes. Like Goggle 5, when the monsters were defeated, they wouldn't grow to an enormous size, but instead they would pilot a robot to face off against the team's huge mecha, Bio Robo. Smitten with what he had seen, Saban felt that he could market the show to an American audience. By 1986, he shot a pilot episode of Bioman and showed it to several different networks in the hopes that it would get picked up. The show was described as a space adventure about five teenagers with identical biorhythms that defended the Earth against the evil half-man, half-robot, Zadar. If the show had been picked up, a young Mark Dacascos would have made history because his lead character, Victor Lee, would have been the first American Red Ranger. Unfortunately, though, the show didn't get picked up. But Heim was always optimistic and he never doubted the potential of Super Sentai here in the US. He even kept a copy of the pilot around to show to investors and executives. Meanwhile in Japan, Super Sentai continued to thrive and evolve, while Saban would be trying to get the green light for Bioman. Even though innovations were being added to each new series, Toei had become comfortable in their approach to Super Sentai, and it was time to try something new. You, you remember it. You remember it. It was good. 